The Great Pyramid, mostly that's the one that's been studied. We actually haven't done a whole lot of studying on the other pyramids. It's something that's severely lacking. Uh, in, fa in fact, we've not even cleared off the bases of some of the other pyramids up at Giza. It's, it's crazy. So you yeah, can understand yeah. why people start to question the historical narrative. The reality of them is probably stranger and more interesting than anything people can think up in terms of fiction. For centuries, we've believed that the ancient Egyptians were the masterminds behind this architectural marvel. But what if they weren't? What if instead, they simply moved into these colossal structures? Join us as we explore groundbreaking theories, unravel new discoveries, and challenge everything we thought we knew about one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. I'm willing to accept that the, that the Great Pyramid was largely completed by the ancient Egyptians. The Great Pyramid of Giza, built during the fourth dynasty of Egypt for Pharaoh Khufu around 2580 to 2560 BC, has long captured the imagination of people worldwide. The discovery of its entrance and the subsequent exploration of its interior chambers have significantly deepened our understanding of ancient Egyptian architecture and burial practices. For centuries, the entrance to this monumental structure was a mystery. Originally, the pyramid was encased in smooth Tura limestone, which concealed any openings. By the time explorers began their quest, most of this casing had been stripped away, revealing the underlying structure. The Great Pyramid was sealed. It was a sealed monument. The first recorded discovery of the entrance dates back to 820 AD when the Caliph al-Mamun ordered an expedition to uncover the pyramid's secrets. The Caliph al-Mamun, who was running Egypt at the time, wanted to get inside the Great Pyramid. His workers supposedly found the hidden entrance after hearing a stone fall within the pyramid. They located the entrance about 17 meters above the ground on the northern face, slightly to the east of the central axis. This discovery led them to a descending passageway. From the entrance, the descending passageway measures about 1.2 meters high and three and a half wide, sloping downwards at an angle of approximately 26 degrees. Is there not a hidden chamber as well? In fact, there is a whole underworld at Giza. This is beginning to be recognized. This passage extends for about 105 meters into the pyramid, eventually reaching the subterranean chamber, also known as the pit. This chamber lies beneath the pyramid, carved into the bedrock, and is unfinished, roughly hewn, and not fully smoothed out like other parts of the pyramid. Measuring approximately 27 by 14 meters and about 8.6 meters high at its highest point, the chamber's purpose remains unclear. We actually don't know what these chambers were for. No, no burial of any pharaoh was ever found inside the Great Pyramid. Some theories suggest it was an early attempt at a burial chamber or simply an unfinished part of the construction. Halfway along the descending passageway, an ascending passageway branches off upwards. Similar in dimensions to the descending passageway, it extends for about 39 meters before reaching the Grand Gallery. The entrance to the ascending passageway was originally concealed by a stone block, adding an extra level of security. The Grand Gallery is one of the pyramid's most impressive features. It is a steeply inclined corridor, measuring about 46.6 meters in length, 8.6 meters in height and 2.1 meters in width at the base, narrowing slightly towards the top. The walls of the Grand Gallery are lined with precisely cut stones, and the ceiling consists of corbelled stone blocks, creating a vaulted appearance. The floor has a series of slots, possibly for the placement of beams or to aid in the transportation of heavy objects. Approximately halfway along the Grand Gallery, a horizontal passageway leads to the so-called Queen's Chamber. This chamber is smaller than the king's chamber, measuring about five and three quarter meters by five and one quarter meters, with a height of six and one quarter meters. The walls are smooth and the ceiling is pointed, forming a gabled roof. The exact purpose of the queen's chamber is still debated. It might have been intended as a secondary burial chamber or a symbolic chamber for the pharaoh's spirit. Continuing up the grand gallery, a horizontal passage leads to the king's chamber, the most important room in the pyramid. The king's chamber is rectangular, measuring about then and half by 5.2 meters, and has a flat roof composed of massive granite beams. The chamber's walls are also lined with granite, and the floor consists of large granite blocks. Inside the king's chamber is a large granite sarcophagus, believed to have held Khufu's body. 
The sarcophagus is too large to have been brought in through the existing passages, indicating it was placed during the construction of the pyramid. Above the king's chamber are five relieving chambers, designed to distribute the weight of the pyramid and prevent the roof of the king's chamber from collapsing. These chambers are separated by large horizontal slabs of granite, each layer relieving some of the weight above. In recent times, advanced technologies like ground-penetrating radar and moon tomography have been employed to explore the pyramid further. These methods have led to the discovery of previously unknown voids and chambers, such as the Scan Pyramid's Big Void, a large empty space above the Grand Gallery discovered in 2017. The purpose of this void remains a mystery and continues to be a topic of ongoing research and speculation. The area surrounding the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as Khufu's Pyramid, has been a treasure trove of archaeological discoveries. I think there's a lot more remains to be discovered under the Giza Plateau. Yeah. These finds offer remarkable insights into ancient Egyptian civilization, their burial practices, religious beliefs, and daily life. One of the most intriguing discoveries is the solar boat pits. Unearthed in 1954 by Egyptian archaeologist Kamal El Malakh, these pits contain two intact boats buried near the Great Pyramid, positioned on the southern side. Known as solar barks, these boats were believed to serve a dual purpose. They were intended for Khufu's journey with the sun god Ra across the sky during the day and through the underworld at night. Another theory suggests they might have been used in the funerary procession of the pharaoh. The boats are made of Lebanese cedar wood, meticulously assembled without nails. The larger boat measures about 43.6 meters in length and features a sophisticated design with a cabin, oars and rope bindings, using a technique known as mortise and tenon. The first boat was painstakingly reconstructed over 14 years by Egyptian conservator Ahmed Youssef Mustafa and is now displayed in the Khufu Boat Museum beside the Great Pyramid. The second boat remains in situ, awaiting advanced preservation techniques. In the early 1990s, Egyptian archaeologist Zahi Hawass and his team made a groundbreaking discovery southeast of the Great Pyramid, the tombs of the workers who built the pyramids. The tombs provided evidence that the builders were paid laborers who worked in three-month rotating shifts, reflecting the societal structure and economy of the Old Kingdom. The tombs contained skeletal remains showing signs of healed injuries, indicating that workers had access to medical care. Pottery shards, tools and remnants of food supplies such as bread and beer were also found, shedding light on their diet and daily life. The presence of beef and fish bones suggests that the workers received good nutrition. The tombs were simple, yet carefully constructed from mud brick and limestone, indicating a level of respect for the workers. Some tombs had hieroglyphic inscriptions and modest grave goods, signifying the workers' social status and the reverence afforded to them. Another significant discovery was made in 1925 by American archaeologist George Reisner when he uncovered the mastaba of Queen Hetaferes I, the mother of Khufu, in the Giza necropolis. Located to the northeast of the Great Pyramid, the tomb was initially hidden under debris. The tomb contained a large cache of funerary equipment, including a golden throne, a gilded bed with a canopy, chairs, a palanquin, and various personal items such as jewelry and cosmetic boxes. The craftsmanship of these items highlights the luxurious lifestyle of the royal family and the high level of artisanship of the period. Interestingly, Hetaferis's body was never found leading to theories that her mummy might have been relocated or never placed in the tomb. Some suggest the burial equipment might have been prepared in anticipation of her death, but used for another purpose. The remains of Khufu's pyramid temple have been uncovered through various excavations conducted over the years, with significant contributions from archaeologists such as Mark Lehner and Zahi Hawass. The pyramid temple was a site for offerings and rituals to honor the deceased pharaoh Khufu, it played a central role in the funerary cult, where daily rituals and ceremonies ensured the pharaoh's immortality. The temple's remains include large limestone blocks, column bases, and fragments of statues and altars. The temple layout typically featured a courtyard, a hyperstyle hall, and sanctuaries. The temple was connected to the pyramid by a causeway, which was used for processional purposes. Various small artifacts, including inscribed blocks, offering tables and fragments of statues, have been found. 
These artifacts shed light on the religious practices of the time, the artistic styles and the materials used. Notably, fragments of a life-size statue of Khufu have been uncovered, providing insights into the pharaoh's appearance and royal iconography. The tomb of Kentkaus Retrat, discovered by archaeologists in the early 20th century, is also referred to as the Fourth Pyramid due to its unique design. Located to the southeast of the Great Pyramid within the Giza necropolis, the tomb features a unique design that combines elements of both a pyramid and a mastaba. It includes a stepped pyramid base with a superstructure that might have been intended as a pyramid but was left unfinished.